Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we are continuing where we left off on the piston ring install for this Buick. Uh, we are going to go ahead and get this thing buttoned up on this episode. Hopefully you guys will stick along and join me for the fun of assembly and the fire up at the end of the episode. So stay tuned. So if you're just joining me, be sure to check out the previous episodes for this car. Uh, I'll throw a link up above for the first episode and of course uh, the second and third episode will also be listed somewhere as well or you know, just continue the series. This is a separate series for this car. Where we left off was we have the head set into place and that's it. I have not done any bolting up of anything. I have to go grab the cylinder head bolts and we have to start getting those into place and start bolting things together. All right, so I am about to put the cylinder head bolts in and I have the two different styles here. These are the main ones, these are the small ones. Now when it comes to torquing this particular head, it's calling for tightening these first, of course, and then these ones are just for the timing cover half of things. Uh, now, you can see behind me here, I have a big screen. Now the reason I have the screen here is not just for me to watch whatever I feel like while I'm working, though I do do that from time to time. It's also for me to put torque specs uh, or procedures up here. Like this particular vehicle has quite the procedure involved. I have to torque to X foot pounds, and then I have to rotate X degrees, and then I have to go torque other things, and, and then they talk about all the camshaft and stuff like that for installing. So I have that all up here, and I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the torquing, as you can see below. Now, when I'm torquing these things or putting these things in, I before I even did anything, even before I put the head in, I blew out all the holes that these sit in. And the reason I blew out all the holes where these head bolts are sitting in is to make sure that there's no oil or liquid of any sort underneath the head bolt. If there is, you could very easily damage the engine block or break a bolt off, worse yet. So that's one thing that you need to make sure of. And uh, then the other thing, of course, is you need to get all your head bolts in and you have to do the proper cross torque. And as you're gonna see, below while I'm doing this and we will be done lickety split here. Okay, so if you recall, the timing chain had jumped and when I was moving the chain, I said if it jumps and then I accidentally made it jump. Genius, right? But anyway, so I was trying to find the timing marks on this thing and it had me so baffled for so long. I have to show you guys the situation as to why it had me baffled and how silly this is and I totally did not expect it so I want to share it just in case you run across this situation. According to the book you're supposed to, there's the key way up there and you're supposed to see a notch down here and I have the crank in about this position and I could not see the little dot down here that I'm supposed to see so I can line it up with the chain. Well as I'm looking at it, okay, you can see there's no dot down there. Well I pulled this whole gear off of here so I just took it and I pulled it off of here because I was so confused as to why I could not see the dot on there, okay? So I flipped it over and I thought, okay, there's no dot over here, so it's not on backwards, which would make no sense from the manufacturer anyway because I'm sure it's never been apart. So I start looking at this thing a little bit closer and then I see this. Notice this little movement right here? There's a shim sitting over top of the sprocket and right there is the dot. So the shim was sitting so nice and perfect on the end of this sprocket I could not see that dot right there. And you can see the shim has all the markings on the back side of it to match up with the markings on there if I were to flip it over. If you run across this and you can't find the dot, make sure there's no silly shim there. And in order to do that, you could probably simply just take a magnet like this and grab the shim and pull it off. You wouldn't have to necessarily pull the whole pulley off. I just wanted to make sure I got that out there for you guys. So yeah, I just had a literal power outage in my garage. It's uh, raining pretty darn good right now. So, wow. 
Winds are blowing. I don't know why the power went out, though. Maybe a lightning strike in just the right place. Who knows? That's some pretty big blobs of rain coming down. Holy crap, that was a thunder. Wow. I wonder how well the camera picked that one up. Oh, the rain almost came to a stop. Weird. All right, so as you can see, I have the, the pulleys sitting in place. I took the bolts and I just, I hand tightened them. I don't want to tighten them down because they're, they're torque yield bolts. And on top of that, I don't have the chain tensioners all properly set in the place. So I don't want to put any stress on the chain by accident. I am going to use a wrench to torque them down, holding the cam and then torquing the bolt. But still, you never know, you might have something go weird and could screw things up. So I'm going to wait until I have all the timing chain components in and then I'm going to tighten that as the last step. All right, I am almost to the point of putting the valve cover gasket on. I do have to put the high pressure fuel pump and this cap for the camshaft in. Now we're going to need lube here and here, but uh, I'm not going to do that yet. What I have here is anaerobic gasket maker. Now you can see these grooves here. You want to clean those out. Those are actually to capture the gasket maker or this anaerobic stuff before it gets over here where you don't want that stuff to be interchanged with that, that piston mechanism over here for the high pressure fuel pump. So if you put this stuff in here, you put it on this side of it, that way when it goes that direction, it doesn't make it past that groove. And you make sure you don't have so much that it can overly fill that groove and just keep going. You just want a real thin layer. You don't need much and it'll be enough to do the job. Once that gasket is in place, then you're able to go ahead and assemble things. Once we're at that point of the valve cover being on, we will be able to continue with the entire rest of the process and get this thing finished up. All right, I have gotten to the point where I'm ready to go ahead and put the oil pan on. I have these rod bolts torqued, the valve cover on, the timing cover is on, I have all the timing components lined up. Uh, balancers back on so I am ready to put the pan back on and uh, the stuff that I use for this this is a RTV style pan uh, there's a couple of different products that uh, are really good one of the products is the Mopar black is actually a pretty good RTV product but this right stuff is also extremely good this is the stuff that I use for pretty much everything uh, uh, just because it's what I prefer uh, it seems to seem to really work good, especially like situations like this where you might end up with oil running down, it'll still adhere and still seal. I don't know how it does it. It's some kind of magic power that it has, but whatever. This rag is actually in the oil sump deal and it's it's blocking off the oil that's dripping down. So I just had that there until I could get the RTV started in place. Uh, I'm gonna go and get this RTV going here. I don't need very much. I just need a little bit and uh, all this oil pan on in no time at all. So on the oil pan, I made sure to put some silicon lubricant right on this area. This is where the dipstick tube is gonna be going into, and I'm gonna be putting that up in the place at the same time as I'm putting the pan on the engine. I have a quick and important update for you guys here on something that needs to be done when you get to this position of the video and uh, I want to make sure that you guys get this taken care of because it's kind of an important step that needs to be done and I totally forgot to do it and had to take the intake back off of the car after the video. So I'm going to pull up this picture here and on this picture you can see this hole between the two center ports of the intake and that hole is very very important to make sure you clean it out it gets plugged up with dirt and debris from the pcv system and this one on this car was actually plugged up so just be sure that you go ahead and take the time to find a drill bit that fits it and i actually took and found one drill bit just slightly larger than the drill bit that fits the hole and opened up the hole a little bit and it made the pcv system work so so well so be sure that you guys clean that out and uh yeah enjoy the rest of the video for those of you who have not seen me do this yet, any big job that I do, I always try and clean up the engine bay a little bit to make it look nice so it looks like I have been in there and I have done something. Uh, otherwise, it just looks like it was the way it was before and it doesn't look like anything was accomplished. So when they pay a pretty penny like they're doing, I like to make sure that they know that they paid something. So believe it or not, WD-40 is the product I use to clean the engine bays. What I do is I just take this and I 
pretty much douse the engine bay wherever there's black plastic specifically, and I clean everything up just using a rag WD-40, and the, the thing comes out very, very clean. We are now at the moment of truth. So I'm going to be trying to start the car quick. It's probably going to take a little bit to fire it up because the uh, fuel system is dry and it's a high pressure pump type fuel system. So it might take me a little bit of a try to get it to start, but that's no big deal. Also, I want to point out something and uh, it's in regards to the work that I did. So there is a lot of components that I just messed with and I just tampered with and a lot of things that could have very easily been screwed up. Now, when I first started doing this type of work, when I got to this point of the vehicle where I had to start it up, I got so nervous doing it. I, I was like, my heart was pounding and I'd go to crank it over and it was like a rush coming through me because it's one of those things where you're like, if it breaks, I'm screwed, you know? Now I've gotten to the point where I'm actually pretty comfortable with it. It's really not a big deal. So if you are new to working on cars, I just want to point out that that feeling is a normal feeling because you're afraid you screwed something up and uh, you may have screwed something up. The whole thing is, you know, if you screwed something up, you're going to learn the hard way what not to do. If you didn't screw anything up, the feeling of relief that comes off of the fact that it starts, runs, and works is such an amazing feeling. And that's what makes me get excited working on cars. When I fired up a huge project such as a motor build, or, or when I first started out, I mean, even something as simple as changing out something that was related to timing components. That's all it would take. And I'd be freaking out that I might screw something up. And I did screw a couple things up at first, but eventually I figured out how to double check myself good enough that usually my screw ups now involve forgetting to connect a connector. I may have done that. This one had a lot of connectors and I had it apart for a decent amount of time. You know, I double checked what I think I could have. I'm gonna give it a shot and try starting it. Okay, so the first part of starting the car, since the fuel system was dry, is I'm gonna prime the pump. I'm just gonna turn the key to the on position. And I'm gonna have a disconnected battery. So, see what I told you about forgetting to connect something? I forgot one of the most important things, the battery. So that's one of those simple things. I forget that a lot. All right, let's see here. There we go. Now I got a fuel pump priming. So I'm gonna shut the key off again, pull it out, reset everything, and then I'm gonna redo it again, prime it, and then try and start it. might be because of the high pressure fuel system that is struggling to start. I'm just double checking for engine light scenario and there's nothing. Now another noteworthy thing is when you start something up after a large project like this, you see all this kind of smoke coming up? That is very normal. The exhaust manifold, as you're touching it, you get your greasy fingers and oily fingers all over it, dribble oil on it somehow, some way. It always ends up smoking. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get this alternator connected again. I saw this right before I put this on and I was going to connect it and then I got distracted. Alright, let's try that again. So as you remember on the first video clip of the first episode, this cap here, uh, when I pulled it off, as soon as it started idling down, it had a lot of blow-by coming past. And I don't want to run it too long because of the cooling system here. I want to make sure that's cool. Okay, so I expect, there's a little blow. It's actually better already. I expect it to be just as bad at first. Oh yeah, and I can feel it sucking down a lot better. Wow. That's amazing that the rings made that big of a difference right away. Normally the rings take a clean it up. So before, I would feel it blowing way up here, and right now all I feel is if I go back here, it's getting, it's, I can feel a little bit going this direction, but that's it. Before, it was coming out here so fast, I could feel it up here really easily, and I can't feel it at all. So now I need to put this bolt in here to, to hold this guy down. I didn't do that yet. 
and then uh, I gotta make sure I get all the cooling system taken care of. I mean, right now it looks full, but I'm gonna let it sit and warm up everything. Yeah, there's a little air in there yet, so this system might not bleed itself. I'm just gonna try and just give it time, do slow, you know, little short burst like I just did of running it until uh, I know the cooling system's good to go. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the plastics underneath the car. So be sure to hit the notification bell below so you can see all the episodes that come out. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.